Okay, students. Namaste. Welcome back to the computer class. Today we are going to do the remaining of chapter number two, that is Windows Seven. Today we are going to learn on managing files and folders, change the views of files and folders, group files and folders, and describe libraries in Windows Seven. Creating a new file. In Windows 7, we can create new file in three different ways: in Windows Explorer, on the desktop, and from a Start button. I'm going to explain you how we can create a new file in these three different ways. We are going to see how to create a new file. First, let us open the Windows Explorer. Start button. All programs. Accessories and then Windows Explorer. Let me maximize it. Now I'll take, say for example, I'm going to open say my documents. Now in this this is the file list pane. I will right click on the file list pane. Then I will click on new. In new you will find a sub list having the different file names or type of files say Microsoft Office Word, Microsoft Office PowerPoint presentation, Office publisher document. So let me click any one of it. Say I'm clicking on Microsoft Office Word document. Now you can see here a new Microsoft Office Word document has been created. Now rename it say class 5 name list. So in this way, we can create a new file. Next, suppose you are in a desktop and you want to create a file on a desktop. Right click, click on new. The same procedure, click on the file that you want to create. Say Microsoft PowerPoint or Office Access. Or you can go for text document or you can go for excel worksheet next one the third one is from start button click on start button click on all programs once you click on all programs you are going to see the different programs which are installed in a computer say i'm clicking on microsoft office and in microsoft office you have different, say Microsoft Access 2007, Microsoft PowerPoint, Excel, Office Group, Office Info Part. So you can click in any one of these programs. Say I want to click on Microsoft Office PowerPoint. If you click the particular corresponding in Office PowerPoint run and you can feed the file from there. Say I am clicking Office PowerPoint. Now, PowerPoint is running. I have got a PowerPoint window. Now I can go here and save and give it a name. So, in this way, you can create files in three different ways. I hope it is clear. Practice it. Creating a new folder. There are three ways by which we can create a new folder. First from the Windows Explorer, second in the desktop and third inside a folder. I am going to explain you practically how to create a new folder. Now let us see how to create a new folder. First let us see in the desktop how we can create a folder in a desktop. Right click on the 
blank area of the desktop, you will find context menu. In the context menu, search new. From new, a new sub menu appears. In this sub menu, search for folder. Click it. You will find a new folder has been created as new folder 2. Now you can give the name to this new folder. Say Windows 7. Then press enter or click outside. So in this way we can create a new folder on the desktop. Now suppose we want to create a new folder inside this Windows 7. Double click or open it. Now in the Windows Explorer toolbar, you will find new folder. Click on this new folder. Now you are seeing a new folder is appearing. Give it a name. Say Word. 2010 and then press enter or click outside. This is the second way by which we can create a folder inside a folder with the help of the new folder button on the toolbar. Now inside this folder we can right click on the file list pane in the blank area. The same process as we have done in the desktop. Click on search for the new in the context menu. Then from this sub menu, click on the folder. Now give it a name. Say Excel. So in this way, we can create new folders. Three you need a file or a folder. There are following three ways by which you can rename a file or a folder. First, in the Windows Explorer. Second, in desktop or inside a folder. And third, by pressing the F2 key. I'm going to show you practically how we are going to rename a file or a folder. Now we are going to see how to rename a file or folder. If a folder is open, now this is a folder, so a new folder is open, and we have a navigation pane and the file list pane. So in this file list pane, you click on any of the file or a folder, right click. And then go to rename. And then you can now rename sales software. And then press enter. This is the one way. Second one. Say I am selecting the folder. Inside this new folder. Select. And then press F2 key. And then rename it, say software. And then press enter. The third way is to click on the organize on the toolbar and click on rename. Now again, you can change. A particular name say new so to rename a file or folder the most important thing 
is that first you have to select the file or the folder. Say in this desktop, I want to rename this new folder. So I have to first select it. Then there are two ways by which you can do it here. First is press F2 key. Now you can see the name has been marked as selected. Now you change the name, say folder. And you press enter. The next process on the next way, right click on the final folder that will be renamed and from the shortcut menu or right click menu select rename. Now you can rename say new folder and then press enter key. The next option is open the file or open the folder and in this you click on organize which is on the toolbar now see I could not find the name as marked or highlighted because I have not selected any file or folder that I want to rename so let me select a file or a folder so I am selecting the new folder. Now click on organize. See the difference. Now rename is highlighted or you can select rename now. Click on rename and then change the name of the folder. Say folder. I think it is clear. You can now practice it yourself. Deleting a file or a folder. There are following two ways by which we can delete a file or a folder. First in the Windows Explorer and second in desktop or inside folder. I am going to show you practically how we can delete a file or a folder. Now you see how to delete file or folder. Now see Windows 7 directory or the folder is open. So let me select the particular folder or file which I want to delete. If you will not select then you can't delete it. So I am selecting Word 2010. Now on the toolbar click on organize and search for delete option. Now click delete. It asks you we want to move the folder or the file to the recycle bin. You have to press yes, then it will delete it. See it. Now I have not selected any file or folder. Now if I click on organize in the toolbar, the delete thingy are not highlighted. So you have to select the file or folder that one you want to delete. Now suppose I want to delete a file or folder from the desktop. So Windows 7 I want to delete. Right click and then click on delete. The same message comes. Are you sure you want to move this folder to the recycle bin? Press yes. So we have deleted the file or the folder in this way. Practice it. I hope you have understood files or folders. Restoring means to bring back all the files and folders you delete move to the recycle bin. When you restore a file or folder it moves back to the location from where it was deleted. Now I am going to show you how practically we can restore deleted files or folders.
restoring deleted files or folders. Restoring means to bring back all the files and folders you delete. Move to the recycle bin. Recycle bin icon is present on a desktop. So let us find the recycle bin. Yeah, this is the recycle bin icon. Double click the recycle bin icon. Now here you will find the deleted files or folders. Click on the deleted file or the folder. And then click restore this item. Say the deleted file or folder has been moved to the place from where it has been deleted. Let us see the Windows desktop. Can you find? See, this is the file, this is a folder Windows 7, which was earlier in the desktop. So, in this way, we can restore the deleted files or folders. Now, if you want to restore all the particular items, click on Restore All Items. If you want to selectively restore, then select the files or folders. Left click, use the control key to select the remaining files or folders selectively. Then restore the selected items. The files or folders will be restored. A file or a folder. To copy a file or folder from one location to another, we can follow any of the three given ways. First, in Windows Explorer, in desktop or inside a folder and third using shortcut keys copying a file or a folder let us open windows 7 directory on the folder now suppose i want to copy vlc media player shortcut and paste it in word 2010 so i will first select the file on the shortcut and then click on organize in the toolbar then click on copy then open word 2010 again go to organize and then click on paste <coughs> so in this way we can copy a file or a folder let us see whether it isn't copied. Yeah, it isn't copied. So, while copying, the original file or the folder is not moved from its present location. Or in other words, we create a duplicate at the file or the folder and then paste the duplicate copy. Original copy is left behind in its original place. Similarly, there is another way by which we can copy. Let me create and let me copy Excel in Word 2010. Right click and then click on copy. Then let me open Word 2010 and right click and paste. So in this way we can copy the file or folder using the right mouse button. The other way, say next play, I want to copy using the shortcut key. Press Ctrl plus C. Then open Word 2010 and press Ctrl plus V. So in this way, we can 
copy. So there are three ways by which you can copy. I hope you have understood. Moving a file or a folder. To move a file or folder from one location to another, we can follow any of the three given ways. First, in Windows Explorer. Second, in desktop or inside a folder. And third, using shortcut keys. Practically, I am showing you how to move a file or folder. Moving a file or folder. For moving a file or folder, first let us select the folder that we want to move or the file we want to move. After selecting, Click on Organize. Now select Cut. And then click on the or open the particular folder where you want to move. Then go to Organize, which is, on the tool, which is present on the toolbar, and click on Paste. In this way, it is removed. Let us go back and see. Yeah, so Word 2010 is not in the Windows 7. It is in Move to Excel. This is the difference between Copy and Move. In Copy, the original file is being duplicated and that duplicate file is copied to the destination folder. But in case of Move, the particular original file or the folder is moved from its location to a new place. The second way to let me open Word 2010. Now here we have VLC Media Player and Next Player. I want to move say VLC Media Player from Word 2010 to Excel. So right click on it. So from the shortcut menu or the context menu, click on cut, then move back. Now we are in the Excel directory, right click and paste. This is the second way. Third way, select the file or folder and then press Ctrl plus X. Now I want to copy this, sorry, I want to move this to Windows 7. Go back to Windows 7 directory or the folder and then press Ctrl plus V. You can see on the on screen keyboard, but here of course while pressing V it is not showing. So we will say media player has been moved from Excel to Windows 7. I hope you have understood. Practice it. It will be more clear. Selecting multiple files or a folder. To select a file or folder, you need to click on it. To select multiple files or folders, we have to follow different processes or methods. There are two ways by which you can select multiple files or folders. First, select adjacent files or folders. In this, we have to use shift key. And second, selecting non-adjacent files or folders. In this, we have to use control key. I am showing you practically how we can select multiple files or folders.
selecting multiple files or a folder. So let us see how we can select multiple files or folders. There are two ways by which we can select multiple files or folders. First, selecting adjacent files or folders and second, select non-adjacent files or folders. Let us see how we can select adjacent files or folders. Adjacent means the files or folders which are near to each other are known as adjacent, non-adjacent, which are far away from each other. Means there is no direct connection between or near to each other. So for example, in this Windows 7 directory, Excel and Images, these are adjacent, whereas Excel and Settings are non-adjacent. So if there is a one gap between the two directories, then it is non-adjacent. So let us see how to select adjacent file or folder. Let me open the on screen keyboard. Now see carefully. Let me select settings. I want to select adjacent files or the folders up to say zip bank. I have selected setting. I'll press shift key and then I will select the last file or the folder of the adjacent files. Now see all these are adjacent files and they were selected. Remember, press and hold the shift key. Don't leave it. Okay, next, none adjacent files or folders. So first, click on the first file that you want to select, then press the control key and hold it. And then select the files, none adjacent files that you want to select. Say sound bank 001. Now I don't want uh, the file. I want directly sync sync one. Then I want this. So this is the non-adjacent selection. I hope it is clear. Changing the views of files or folders. Windows 7 provides many different ways to view files or folders in Windows Explorer. These views changes the previews of all the files and folders. To change the views, click on the drop down arrow on the change your view button present on the toolbar and choose the type of view. First, extra large icons, second large icons, then medium icons, small icons, list, details, styles and content. Some of the views I have shown you practically or I'm going to show you practically the remaining you can try it yourself. Changing the view of files or folders. Windows 7 provides many different ways to view files or folders in Windows Explorer. These views change the preview of all the files and folders. To change view, let me first open a particular folder, say Windows 7. Now, in this folder, on the, on the toolbar, find the change your view button. This is a change your view button. Now click on drop down arrow. So you can see the different views. First the extra large icon, large icon, medium icon, small icon, list, details, styles and content. So I am clicking on extra large icons. So this is the effect of the extra large icons. You can see the particular icons look very big and you can clearly see. So and then you can change to large icons. You can try yourself at home. Let me Go to details. Now this is little bit important. Now here you can see the particular files or folders are arranged 
is a name the modify type size you can add more on these options by right clicking and then you can say date created authors tags title etc now what is the significance of this suppose i want to sort the particular files or folders depending on when the day when we have modified the particular file or folder <coughs> click on the modified so now all the particular files and folders are arranged based on the date modified <coughs> now let me click on size if you click it again then you can see the arrow sign there which is showing the descending and now it is showing the from bigger to smaller and then <coughs> In this way you can change the type also all the folders are one place then the application then the shortcut and zip archives you can try the remaining yourself grouping files or a folder grouping arranges the file and folders into different sections depending on the type of grouping you need the grouping is important so that we can search the particular or we can get the particular file or folder easily there are different group options first name date modified type and size i am showing you practically how we can do it Grouping files or a folder. Grouping arranges the file and folder into different sections depending on the type of grouping you need. So how to group? Right click on the blank area in the file list pane and search for group by. Now I want to group by say type. So we have name, date modified, type, size. So I am selecting type. Now you can see clearly it has been grouped according to application, then DLL files, then file of folder, then file for HTML document, some shortcuts, WinRAR, or archives, depending again on size. So in this way, it is easier for you to find out the files that you want. Again, I'm right click, group by. See, I want to group by size. So that all the directories of the folders have been in one place, which are very big, is placed in one. The huge, see, 16 to 100 MB, large 1 MB, then medium, small, and tiny. So in this way, it is grouped, so it is easier for you to find the required files or the Orders. The remaining you can try yourself at home. I hope you understood. Seven. Libraries help you to manage your files in a better way. Library is a collection of files and folders. These files and folders can be located in different drives and locations on a computer. It does not create shortcut to these files. It just displays all these files at one place. Windows 7 comes with four default libraries, document, music, picture and videos now i'm going to show you where we can find libraries in windows 7 Libraries in Windows 7. Libraries help to manage your files in a better way. It is a collection of files and folders. These files and folders can be located in different drives and locations on a computer. It does not create a shortcut to these files. It just display all these files 
at one place. Let us find out the library. Open any particular directory in the Windows, uh, Windows Explorer opens and then in the Windows Explorer in the navigation pane, try to find out the libraries. Yeah, here I found the library. Now, Windows 7 have four default libraries. First is document, second is music, third is pictures and fourth one is videos. Let me click on document. So these are different files or folders which have the documents, music, then pictures, then videos. Dear students, I hope you have understood. Go through the video and practice in a computer. If any doubt, you are, feel free to ask me. So this is the end of our class for today. Thanks. Have a nice time. Bye. See you in next class.